that a king would take my place. I cried, Lord, I'll go with you every step of the way, for that's all I can do, my debt to repay. I love him too. Yeah. 
your sponsor sheets are on the back table and pick one up and give me the little slip. Hallelujah. Thank you, everybody. Hallelujah. You love him too much to fail him. It is so important to us that that makes a difference in our life. In every area of your life, no matter what you deal with, love is the thing that makes the difference. And if you love God enough, if you love Him too much to fail Him, then you want everything that He has made available for you. If you don't want everything that God has made available for you, I question your love for Him. Because He wants to give you things. He, he is there. He talks to you. He ministers to you. He does everything that He can to... Um, strengthen you and encourage you and you know why has God given you all the things that he has given you if you're just going to leave them lay Amen. Amen. the Bible says that God's gifts and his callings are without repentance Amen. that means that he don't give up just because you gave up yes. but he continues to minister and he continues to work in your life yes. and sometimes Let's say you're having a real rough time dealing with where you're at in your life right now. Ask yourself this question. Am I fighting God? Who am I at war with? Am I blaming Satan for all the negative things that are happening in my life? Or am I the one that is the blame because I'm not doing what God wants me to do? I've been there, so I know what I'm talking about. It's been a lot of years ago been 50 or 40 some years ago but back at that time I was in rebellion against God my family was falling apart jobs were hard to get money was hard to get all the different things that was going around in, in our life the turmoils the arguments the disagreements of a, no matter what it was and even as sweet as sister Ford is she could never do anything to please me and that wasn't because of her. It was because of the war that was going on inside of me. It was because I wasn't doing what God had intended for me to do in my life and do the work that He has laid out for me to do when I was 14 years old. When I was 14, He already told me what I had to do. And rebellion... The Bible says rebellion is as the spirit of witchcraft, and it's an abomination in the sight of God. It tells you that in the book of Leviticus. That it is rebellion against God, rebellion against His authority, rebellion against what He wanted me to do. And I do all the other things. Oh, I was busy doing this, and I was busy doing that. I, you know, I, I worked hard. I had good jobs. I, I made good money. And I've told you before, we bought new cars every couple of years, sometimes up to 13 days old. And it depends on how often she wrecked them. And so, you know, we had all of that. I lived in the middle of a golf course. I had a 160-acre backyard. I could play golf any time I wanted. I could go over to their clubhouse and order a steak anytime I want. Didn't cost me a dime. They had a swimming pool, and Mary could go there with that swimming pool, and she could, you know, lay around there all day long. And these women would come up to her, talk to her about women liberation. She said, Liberation from what? <laughs> and we had all of the things that we needed and wanted. You know, it was really bad when you go to the grocery store and can't find anything that you want to eat because you're tired of eating all of it. Not that you couldn't afford to buy it. It was just that that's the same stuff that we've been eating. And I, I, I'd buy a half of beef and have them butcher it for me, and I'd give half of it away because I didn't like the meat you had to chew real hard to eat. So if it wasn't the prime cut, I wouldn't eat that. Now, I mean, you know, things are a little different in our world today. Hot dogs are even nice. 
But we had all of that, had all those things around us that, that, that we wanted. Ordered spatial cars. They didn't go buy something off of a lot. We ordered our car. Went down and said, I want this, and I want that, and I want this, and I want that, and I want this, and I want that in the car, and, and wait six weeks for them to have the factory make that for us. But then the war was taking place. The battles were taking place. The struggles were taking place. Fighting against what God had ordained for my life. Fighting against what God said, this, Jim Ford, you're 14 years old. I laid in the, I laid in the Spirit for over two hours at the church. You know, no, none of this microwave popcorn kind of things that go on. But laid there, and God ministered to me, and I knew that that's what God wanted me to do. I told everybody that's what God wanted me to do, and not do it. Testify to people, this is what God has set before me to do. And then not do it. The struggle came. The battlefield became very hard. And I'm like the rest of the people. I blame Satan for the troubles. We like to play the blame game. It's always somebody else's problem. Always somebody else's fault. Because they did this, I had to do that. One of the kids were telling me the other day, well, they pushed me, so I had to hit them. You know. And so this war that was going on, the struggle, the battle, because I wasn't where God set me, where He set my feet, I was like some of these Olympic people that were on those balance beam and Gabby the other day. And I mean, that was her very best thing in the Olympics. She was the best there was. Got down that she was there. Uh, she could have got the gold. Got up on that balance beam that she jumped on and flipped upside down without touching her hands on it, land on her feet, and she fell off of it. got off balance just a little bit. And sometimes when your life gets off balance just a little bit, you correct it, and sometimes you correct it too hard. Sometimes on an icy road, Sister Pat was going down to Christmas rally one day and uh, here a couple of years back, and she got on that... Uh, black uh, ice that you, you're going down by Springfield down there and all of a sudden that her car lost control and, and I know she was trying to control it. The next thing she knew, she was in the, uh, in the middle, in the meridian, heading back toward Danville. And so she came on back home. <laughs> I don't blame her. But we had went down two hours earlier and there was no ice on those roads. And so we got down safe, and we were there, and we did that. And sometimes our timing is just a little bit off. And when that timing is just a little bit off, we find ourselves out of control. Find ourselves not doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done. And, and we say, well, we did the best we could. Timing was off. And just like Gabby on that balance beam, that uh, just a fraction, half a foot on that balance beam would have made the difference whether she made that jump or whether she fell off of that balance beam. That half a foot that missed that balance beam lost her the gold. Sometimes when we are so close to achieving the maximum of what God has set before us in our life to do. We have come to the place that we have achieved the maximum. And we get a little bit off balance. And when we get that off balance, here we are. We, we have fallen. We're flat on our face. We even get embarrassed sometime and should we go back and do it again? You know? Should I, 
should I try that again? Or, you know, is it time for me to just quit? It's time for me to stop, go, you know, find me a corner somewhere and sit down and not do anymore? Or is it time for me to get back up on my feet again? The Holy Spirit is a holy springboard that when you fall down, you're flat on your face, He bounces you back up. You don't stay there. I was watching Mackenzie yesterday. She's starting gymnastics, and she was out in the back room on a, the trampoline, which I've, I've never tried one of those. I, I don't know if I could do them or not. But she was in that back room on that trampoline and, and bouncing on that trampoline. And, you know, they, they, you know, they get way up here in the air and do flips and, you know, uh, and fall down. And they, and they jump up again. They fall down. They jump up again. They fall down. They jump up again and fall down. My problem is I've fallen and I can't get up. And so this is how the Holy Spirit then works within our life. The Holy Spirit is that springboard that when you have fallen, He don't let you stay down there. You don't like that. I'll tell you right now, you don't like that sometimes. You like that. Hey, it's time for me to lay back here and do nothing. Let someone else do it. No. He bounces you back up on your feet. Keep going. You got to keep pressing forward. You got to keep doing what I've set before you to do. You don't give up because the trials get hard. You don't give up because it don't seem like you can make it to the top of that mountain, but you just keep one step at a time, one step at a time, and, and, and just keep going and going and going. And, and it, it's hard. It's hard to walk. What happened to the paved highway? I expected when I become a Christian that he was going to pave my way all the way. And I was going to get on this super highway and boom, I was going to be there. And I got on that highway and all of a sudden it was like this summer. Some of those super highways, the heat got so hot and there was just a little bubble of water down underneath there and it started bubbling that water in there and all of a sudden the highway busted up in the, in the air. I didn't expect that, God. I thought you anointed me. And I thought my anointing could speak to the mountain and make it move. And now, here I am climbing that mountain. Can you imagine Moses? Got out there in the middle of that desert with these stiff-necked people that he was the pastor of. Got out there and they moaning and groaning, complaining, Where's my garlic? You know, I can't imagine... Two million people eating garlic and no breath mints. And Moses is out there in the middle of that and going through all that. And, and God said, Moses, leave these people down here in this nice, beautiful valley here. They've got water. They've got all this. And I want you to climb that mountain. What? I want you to climb that mountain. And I will talk to you when you get up there. Well, why can't you talk to me here, God? You're God. I mean, you can talk to me anywhere, right? Do I have to climb that mountain, God, before you're going to talk to me? Climb the mountain. I don't want to. I like the paved highway. I like the comfort. I like everything running smooth in my life. Climb the mountain. Oh, but God, surely there is another way that we can accomplish this. You know, God, 
I'm a person of faith. And I believe that I can just stay here. And you're going to take care of it all. Climb the mountain. Moses then climbs up this mountain. Struggles. I mean, this, this is not a, a 15 minute trip. I mean, you're talking about a 7,000 foot mountain. It isn't walking from here to your automobile. 7,000 foot of rocky, unpaved, uncharted territory. That maybe nobody had ever walked up there before. It isn't like it is today when you go to those places because they've moved rocks and they've, you know, made it so you can walk. Wasn't that way then. All kinds of stones. Not careful. You step on that stone, down you went. You lose control. Don't like that, do we? We like control. I like to be in charge. I like to know what's going to happen next. Sometimes God don't let me know what's going to happen next. Sometimes that move of faith has to really be because I have no idea what He's doing. Sometimes He just simply stays up on the top of that mountain and says, now if you want to talk to me, you're going to have to work your way to where I am. You're going to have to find a way to get from here to get to over here where, where I, I need you to be. The winds are blowing. The dust is blowing. You start walking down through some of those areas and, and that dust you've seen in Iraq and in that area where that, the dust would be so bad you could not see from here to the back of this building. And it gets disappeared. Where am I going? It has disappeared. I'm up here. Walk into that. Total oblivious to anything my mind understands. I cannot see from here to there and I'm walking into that God and all of a sudden my eyes are so full of dust that I, I have to close them and I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea where I'm going to set my foot. Is that going to be a, 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 a location that is soft? Is going to slip? It's solid? What, what am I stepping on, God? I can't see nothing. I, I don't understand this. I, 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 th I thought you loved me and, and that I wouldn't have to have this kind of battles anymore and, and, I, and, and I don't know where to even step my foot, God. I can't see past the end of my nose. And if I open my eyes, the, the darkness seemed to be just surrounding me in any way I look I cannot see anywhere and, and what do I do God come on my sheep know my voice my sheep know my voice you don't have to see where you're going. You don't have to understand where you're going. You don't have to understand what's happening around about you. You don't have to have any, any visions of anything going on around about you. Come on. Up the mountain, Moses. Finally, Moses gets up to the top of that mountain there in, in the book of Exodus. He gets to the top of that mountain. And when he gets up to the top of that mountain, all of a sudden everything's clear. Sun is shining. Beautiful clouds floating. Then he hears the voice of God. But he had to get up the mountain to hear the voice of God. And God spoke to him and he directed him for the rest of his life when he got into that location. When he got up there where he was no longer struggling, no longer 
preconceived ideas, no longer looking for that paved highway, no longer caring about what went on behind him. That's the past. I don't care about that. All I want to do is see your face, God. I want to know, are you real? I just want to know, God, are you real? I don't understand what's going on in this world, God. I want to know, are you real? Will you just let me see you, God? God said to Moses, I'll let you see as I pass by. I'll let you know that I am God. I'll let you know that I am He that has sent you. I'll let you know that I am He that has called you. I'll let you know I am He that has empowered you. I will let you know that I am He that has anointed you. I'll let you know that I am He that has planted you where I have planted you. And I want you to grow. And I want you to become strong. And I want you to have victory over everything that has defeated you. But you've got to know I'm God. And God took His finger and wrote the Ten Commandments that said, Go now. There's trouble in the camp. Oh, God, trouble in the camp? You want me to go back down there? Oh, I love it here with you, Jesus. I love it here with you, God. I love it here with you, Lord. Go back to the camp, Moses. There's trouble. Oh, my Lord. I like this feeling of worship and praise and peace. And love. And you want me to go back to that? Time to climb back down that mountain, Moses. You came here to be empowered to do that ministry. You didn't come up here just to stay. You came up here and listened to me direct you. You came up here that I might empower you. And Moses comes down out of that mountain. When he comes down out of that mountain, the people looked on Moses and they said, He's shining. There is a glow. There's this Shekinah glory that has engulfed his being. And he looks at the ministry field that God had put him in. And here in this ministry field that God had put him in. And, and here they made a golden calf. And they, you know, they're, they're sacrificing things. And they're uh, doing all these horrible dancing. And all the sexual sins. And all these other things. Oh my God, all these things that are going on. And, and you told me to come back here. Let me go back on the mountain, God. I did not call you to minister on the top of the mountain. I called you to minister to where I have set you to minister. I have called you. I have empowered you. I have anointed you. Now I want you to do what I have set before you to do. I want you to accomplish what I have set before you to do. I want you to quit complaining. I want you to quit moaning. I want you to quit groaning about it. I will empower you. And if you need to come back up in the mountain, Moses looked at those people and threw the Ten Commandments at them. (laughs) Have I ever felt like doing that, Lord? Yes. All right. Now that I've done that, I've got to go back up that mountain. I've got to climb back up the mountain again. Because he had to go back and get a new tablets. 
had to go back up there again, had to climb all the way back up that mountain because he blew what he was doing in the first place and he had to climb all the way back up in that mountain again. It was the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, all the way back up that mountain again. Going through the same thing that I went through before and finally he gets to the top of the mountain and God is still there. He says, I knew Moses, you were going to blow that. I knew that's what was going to happen when you got back down there. See, I've already made you a set of tablets here. I've got them here for you already. I knew that you were going to have to come up and get these. I knew you were going to get mad at those people, and I knew you were going to throw those tablets at, and I just wanted to see if you would climb this mountain again. I wanted to see if you would come back up that mountain again and get them again. Yes, Lord. I'll climb that mountain. At the very end of Moses' life, here he is, the promised land, right out there in front of him. What God tell him to do at that point? Come up on the mountain. Now up on Mount Horeb, you have to come back up here. But God, how many mountains do you want me to climb? I mean, haven't I climbed enough? I'm 120 years old now, God. Come up here, Moses. I'm going to show you something. Here's all the glory that I promised. Here's everything that I promised you 40 years ago. If you would have been obedient 40 years ago. This is what I promised you then. But because you listened to those stiff-necked people and, 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 and the spies that went in there, I, I gave you some people that really told you the truth and you didn't want to listen. But you listened to all these other people around you. Oh, we never do that, do we? You listen to all these people around you that said, that's impossible! You can't do that! You, you, you know... How are you going to accomplish these things? You don't really know what you're doing. You know, I've watched some of these young people in the church start driving, and I'm scared. <laughs> what is it, God? Here it is, Moses. Look at it. He didn't let Moses go in there alive. I don't know... I have a debate with some of the theologians what really happened to Moses. I don't think Moses actually died. I know in the book of Deuteronomy it says that, you know, he, he died and God buried him. Moses wrote the book of Deuteronomy except for that very last part. And somebody wrote that in there because they didn't understand what was really going on. And why don't I believe that Moses died? I believe God just took him. And then here's Jesus out in the middle of that same area, may have been that same mountain horde that he was on. They could have been. And all of a sudden, there was a transfiguration took place. And who was the person that was standing on the mountain with him? Moses. Here's Moses standing on the Mount of Transfiguration next to Jesus. Climb that mountain one more time, Moses. And here, this has been 2,000 years, and I'm still mountain climbing. I'm still up on that mountain. I'm still going up that mountain. And he passed it on to you and me. Vernon D. used to sing the song, One More Mountain to Climb, One More Valley to Cross. What a, what a thing. I've got this one more mountain to climb. You know, the other day I was moaning at our Wednesday night Bible study because I didn't really want to be bishop over this next time period. God said, you got one more mountain to climb. 
was not my desire. But he says, who's in charge? And if you don't climb the mountain this time, I'm going to make you climb it another time. If you don't listen to me and climb that mountain, you're going to have to do it again. And where's your mountain at? You're standing at a base of a mountain this morning. You're standing there and God is on the top of that mountain telling you, come up here. And you said, God, I've climbed enough. I'm tired. I've worked at it hard enough. Can't you find somebody else that would do that? I've quit, God. I gave up. You know, God, you've, you've got some of these young people that oh, they got all the energy in the world and no brains to use it with. And here I've got the brains and no energy left. And God says, I've set this before you. That ministry that I gave you, I gave you. Amen. Amen. Don't go passing it off. I'm sure when Moses came back down out of that mountain that second time and he got down there and looked at that again. Oh. But he continued with it. Paved highway disappeared out of his mind. No longer did he look for that paved highway. Let me tell you something. When Moses left Egypt, the old... Egypt Syrian road which was over toward the Mediterranean Sea was as good as they did back at that time a paved highway they could have walked from Egypt to Jerusalem in less than two months on that paved highway in less than two months they could have been there. But because he listened to the wrong people, they had to roam through all the other things that they had done. Moses was a leader. He could have been Pharaoh. Could have been the most powerful man in the world. And he chose to follow God. You're sitting here today with that same decision. And God's saying unto you, come here. Come here. I'm calling. And I invite you that have been listening to this sermon and listening to God to come and stand here. Come and stand with me. For this is where God has called you. And the ministry that He has set before you, He has set before you. The mountain's hard to climb. The struggle was hard. Come on, move on in. There's plenty of people coming. Getting harder to climb? Come on, come on in. Spread all the way across here. I don't know individually what God has spoke to you about in this sermon. But I know it's time to come again to the top of that mountain. And get your instructions. It's time where God has planted you. To, for you to perform what He has planted you there to perform. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, 
we stand here. And we are at the foot of the mountain, God. We know we are where you planted us in our spiritual journey. And Lord, we're looking up to the top of that mountain where we hear your voice. And Father, we come before you now. And we ask you to let your anointing flow upon us. That we're able on this unpaved highway with all the distractions and all of the voices that would stop us from doing what you have set before us to do. All those things that would detour us from the path that you have set before us. And Father, we stand here in agreement right now that we want what you want for us. And we submit unto your power, unto your authority, unto the glory of God. Lord, as Moses submitted unto you, we want to submit unto you today. As your prophet submitted unto you, we want to submit unto you today. As the Lord Jesus submitted unto you, even unto the death of the cross, we want to submit unto you today. No matter how hard the journey is, no matter how hard the struggle is, no matter how rough the going gets to be, God, we are going to persevere and we are going to move forward in what you have set before us to do. We claim the anointing to accomplish all that you have set before us to do. Lead us, Lord. Let us hear your voice and let us not be turned aside by any other voice that is out there. But let us know that you are God and we are your children. We thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen, amen. As God directs you, listen to him. As God would have you to move, move. Do not move before He directs you and, do, and only stop when He tells you to stop. As it was in the wilderness, they followed the flame at night and the cloud by the day. When the flame moved, they moved. When it stopped, they stopped. In the day when the cloud moved, they moved. When the cloud stopped, they stopped because they listened to God. Lord bless, we'll see you in service tonight.